I am the ultimate in Predacon leadership. Are you really? Are you really the ultimate in Predacon leadership? Of course. Really? You know, I look and I think you are ultimate class. You're really about the size of a leader class. So, uh, okay, I can buy that. Your price point was kind of at that leader class price point. Okay, I can buy that. But what if I told you that I could get a version of you that's really just as big, and probably just as imposing, for about half the price? Yeah, that's right. You don't know what to say, do you? Well, that's why today, to conclude my look at whether or not the Predacons, as depicted in Transformers Prime, can be a viable third faction, we're going to take a look at another version of this character, that being the version 2, I'll take this guy out of it, the version 2 Voyager class Predaking. Yeah, you heard me right. Voyager class. So stick around. We're going to kind of cover everything with him and sort of do a comparison with the other one and see which one might be a better fit as your Predacon leader in the latest Gotba True review. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor. Check me out everywhere, and I'm glad to have you here. And we're concluding this look at this, what I like to call forgotten faction, uh, being the Predacons, with this figure, with this guy. Uh, I absolutely love him, uh, to be honest with you. And some people may or may not agree with me. But I'm going to explain why. Uh, let's start off with the paint apps. This guy has a lot of like smoky, uh, translucent plastic, which I'm not a huge translucent plastic fan, but I feel like it works on this character. I feel like that this is perhaps, to my sensibilities, the most accurate sort of look that we got for him uh, for the animation. I'm giving his anime or his paint apps a nine, to be honest with you. Uh, the the wings have cool veining. You could open them out. The wings have cool veining. They are also translucent, but I love the kind of veining texture in them. Uh, and it pops with the translucent plastic, to be honest with you. Uh, I got them bent back. If you want to kind of bend them forward, he could still have, you know, an imposing sort of uh, Predacon or Predaking silhouette. <clears throat> uh, this, is, of course, is not the combiner. A lot of people have kind of dissed this guy for not being that version of Predaking. But again, timeline-wise, this guy technically should have come before the Combiner that we all know and love. Maybe the Combiner was a bit of an homage to him. Now, this guy was a Voyager class. And from what I've heard, he's he's largely an upscale version of the uh, Cyberverse Commander class, which is basically taking a Legends class figure and upsizing it to a Voyager class. But he became a huge Voyager class. Here he is next to the... Uh, ultimate Beast Fire Predaking, and they're, you know, head to head, they're pretty much the exact same size, to be honest with you. Granted, his wings, uh, this guy's wings stick out more for a grander silhouette, but <clears throat> honestly, they are both pretty impressive in size and stature. Uh, here we have, you know, a figure that was at the Voyager price point. And the size of a leader class. And if you don't believe me, here he is with a current leader class being Alpha Trion from the Titans Return line. I looked at him in full in episode 190 and Predaking towers over the guy. Um, you know, here he is next to the uh, Titans Return leader class Power Master Optimus Prime. And again, they're about the same size. He's, he's a Voyager price point at a leader class size. Uh, and I can dig that all day long. I think that is awesome. As for accessories, he comes. He actually comes with a, a blaster. It's a little friction blaster. There's nothing to get excited about, but he comes with this blaster. I, I feel like that this might be the only version of Predaking that actually came with a blaster. It does 
go in his hand right there so he can hold it you know he can he can hold it just fine and if you want you can even attach it to his other accessory which I'll talk about now and that is his Infernum Blade. Uh, some people have said that it's not as impressive as the Beastfire Predaking one. Uh, and of course, the Beastfire one is, you know, I'll give credit where credit is due. You know, here's both of them. The Beastfire one is certainly thicker, it's more detailed, but I kind of dig the fiery texture on the Voyager class one as compared to the silvery texture on the uh, ult uh, ult Ultimate class one, ultra class, ultimate class one. Um, they're both impressive. It's a, it's a big, dangerous looking blade. There is a five millimeter peg right at the top and you can take the blaster and it sticks in there just fine. So you can store it in there. And the Inferno blade does go in his hand. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's an impressive, it's an impressive looking melee weapon. I'm not a huge melee weapon fan, but that is an impressive looking melee weapon to be sure. Um, so I can, you know, I can dig that. We'll take that out. I, I will say this, it is so huge that sometimes it does affect his ability to stand. Um, but so far we have a nine for pain depth. Pose ability, play ability, okay. In Dragon mode, the head is static for the most part. That's unfortunate. You still have full use of the arms and whatnot in that mode, which means, you know, you can bring the wings back. I mean, the arms can go all the way around on a clicky ratchet. They go out, clicky ratchet, elbow clicky ratchet, bicep swivel, uh, the hands, I guess they can bend down a little bit, technically. Um, we take those out to the side. The wings, of course, I've already shown you can move those and they can come out. Uh, the legs can go all the way out to the side, um, bringing those down. If you get the wings out of the way a bit here and the head up, we have a bicep or a, a thigh swivel um, that's really encased inside this entire gray piece of plastic like you don't even see it. Um, at least I think it's encased in there. Maybe, uh, maybe it's a mushroom peg actually. Maybe it's a mushroom peg in right here. Sorry, my mistake. It's a mushroom peg just above the knee. Uh, clicky, clicky knee that, you know, goes up 90 degrees or more, to be honest with you. That's incredibly impressive. Um, the feet can kind of pivot forward and back a little bit. And I think that's about it. Oh, and the head. That can go all the way around as well. No waste again. The, the lack of waste, uh, that's, you know, that's a bit unfortunate. But come on, clicky ratchets everywhere on this guy. He's so solid. So solid. Uh, an ankle tilt would have been nice. I gave the other one a score of nine for articulation. I'm gonna give this guy an eight and a half because of the fact that he is missing the ankle tilt, and I, I would have really liked that. So he's got a nine and an eight and a half. He's scoring great so far. Uh, as did the other one. The other one got an overall score of nine. Um, so this guy has a nine and an eight and a half. So we're gonna go into his transformation next and see how that scores with things. It is easy for a figure this huge. It is easy because it is basically a, a Legends figure upsize. We turn the head around and we bring the beast head up. That's the first thing to do. We angle the shoulders out and angle the shoulders out. You may have to adjust the wings and then you basically flip the uh, hands back so that his front claws come out, flip the hands back so that his front claws come out and really there's, there's the front of our dragon mode done. Um, these, I mean, you can, you know, again, bend them down or bend them up as you see fit. Uh, open them out as much as you want as you see fit. Uh, the head, it can go down a little bit and up a, a lot. Uh, let's bring that down. 
It can go up a lot and down a little bit, but it, no side to side. That's a shame. Uh, now, as for the remaining section, the back of this guy, well, you take this leg and you bring it out, and you take this leg and you bring it out. There is um, a little black section here on the leg. Uh, it goes over a little tab on the translucent plastic. Um, on mine, I have the tab on this leg. I got it cracked off on this leg, which is unfortunate, but you know, you're kind of Taking that risk with translucent plastic, that's the one thing I don't like about this guy. But you bring those down out of the way for now. You take the feet right here and you flip it back and you flip it back. Now, there's up on this section, there's a rectangular slot here and a rectangular slot right here. The feet will flip up. The tabs that the black legs were tabbed onto from the translucent plastic go into these little slots. Naturally, where I have one you know, broken off, it's not going to be able to do that. So I'll put this leg up first and you just bend it at the knee, straight up at the knee, you bring it up and you, so hard to try and do this, and you line up the little peg on the translucent plastic with the little peg hole on the translucent plastic of the body and you take this leg and you bend it up. Now, like I said, this one cannot tab in, but the ratchets are so tight that it really doesn't matter. He's gonna stay there anyway. And pretty much, boom, this is him in dragon mode. Except for one thing, we do not have a tail. Again, his Infernal Blade becomes his tail. On the sword itself, there's a, a little peg, uh, I guess, up right here. There's a little peg down right here. And if you come back here to the, the legs, there's a little circle back here kind of on the knee and a circle here on the knee uh, that are slots. And you basically sandwich this in those two knee circles if I can get one side in. Usually, usually that's the trick is to get one side in. There. And there you go. There you go, there you have it. And the tail can move down, and the tail can move way up, so he actually has good tail articulation. Uh, these legs go forward and back, no knee. They can go out to the side though, that far, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, you still have the full range of the arms. Uh, really the biggest limitation is the fact that that head uh, can't go side to side and the mouth doesn't open. That's really your biggest limitation. Uh, but he looks, I think he looks fantastic. So, how does he look compared to the other dragon form? Well, you know what, that's a really fair question. So, there he is, and there he is. Um, you know, if you look at both of them, let's close up his wings just to make this a bit easier. If you look at both of them front on, I mean, there you go. Honestly, the Voyager one has more paint apps on the head. Um, if you look at them kind of side on here, I feel like that I feel like that this guy has a wider body, but I feel like this guy has a fuller body because of those thighs making up a good portion of it. He's excellent, but I feel like he's just as excellent for half the price. Plus I love the clicky ratchets. They're they're awesome. They're just awesome. His transformation is so quick, so easy. That thing is a 10. Honestly, he's a 9 as well. Um, now, just to finish it off here, just to finish off this entire, entire series, I'm going to put this guy back in his robot mode really, really quickly here. Um, put that down and that back. Put that down and that back. We come up and we lift these up and bring them down. And we bring that back and turn his head around. It's like, honestly, it's, you saw how quickly I just did that. Bring those wings down. You saw how quickly I did that and he's back in robot mode. And you know, here he is with his brethren. He's the leader, of course. Vertebrate is the quiet brooding bruiser. Here's Laserback, his second in command. Um, you know, Ripclaw, 
She's very protective of the whole group. Uh, we have Blackbeak and the conscience of the group being Grimwing. If he wants to stand. Um, Blackbeak apparently is kind of a kind of a savage. Um, you know, here's we'll move. Here's Dark Steel, who is the one who brings a bit of levity to the group. And we have the Combiner, the Mighty Abominus. Mighty, that's probably questionable. And of course, the one that I think is the, the wise sage, uh, the confidant, the advisor, and the guy who stands also oh very poorly, Skylinx. And that's my Predacon army. Uh, it would be nice to add a Skystalker to this, possibly, but again, that's really just a repaint of Skylinx. All these guys have a role on the team. And you know what? Looking at this, I think that that's an impressive look. I think that that's an impressive group. And I would have loved to have seen them better fleshed out. Um, you know, on the Transformers Prime show, I know that we had them in some comics and there was some packing fiction with the toys. Uh, and that's great, but it would have been, I think they would have been on a mobile game, but it would have been nice to see what they could have been. And maybe one day, we will. Anyway, I think an impressive group. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you think that they are viable or not. Not the fact that they were just mentioned. We all know that. But were they truly a strong, viable group. My vote? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's throw them in and see what they can do to mess up some bots and some cons. And maybe that's just me having a bit of fun at, uh, you know, at the expense of some toys that sometimes got overlooked. Who knows, maybe you see these guys in a new light. Anyway, thanks for dropping by and giving me some of your time and I look forward very, very much to the next time that you and I get together again right here inside the videos.